you have no concept of personal space? Like, none at all? <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Cheesecake Panda, or Tyler, as you may know me. Uh, I am back with another tutorial. As you can see, I, I am a little fox. It's so cute. Ugh. The game Tunic recently came out and it is very much reminiscent of the old adventure style games. Uh, it's really cute because you play as a little fox and you run around having adventures, fighting things, and obviously there's a bigger plot. Don't want to spoil that. I was asked to create a cosplay of the main character, uh, the little fox that you get to play as. So if you would like to see how I made all of this, my shield, it's massive, it's so big. <laughs> And my sword here. Uh, just keep on watching this video. I'm gonna show you how I made everything. Stay tuned. <laughs> as I mentioned, the game Tunic is an adventure game in which you play as a cute little fox. When planning this cosplay, I knew I wanted to match the playful look of the character. Due to the short turnaround time of this build, I knew I needed to start with my props. I began with the arm guards first. I used a pattern from my arm guard set and altered it to match my design. I cut the base out of 5mm EVA foam, and I also cut a little decorative top piece. Before gluing everything together, I added some details with 2mm foam. With those details in place, I glued together my side seams with contact cement. As finishing details, I added some foam dowels as well as some foam straps to look like fake leather straps. Now onto the props. For my sword and shield, I started by creating my patterns. I then transferred my patterns onto 10mm EVA foam. For the shield, I cut out two pieces, both creating one half of the shield. I then glued these together with contact cement. The slight curve of the center seam gives the shield a nice shape. To add detail to my shield, I traced out a cross shape onto my pattern and then cut it out of 2mm foam. To go along the edge, I cut out a beveled strip of 5mm craft foam and glued everything into place. As a finishing detail and to really make my shield look nice and clean, I took these triangular foam dowels and I glued them along the edge. I also added some flat back pearls to mimic rivets. At this point, I sat aside my shield and began working on my sword. I once again cut two layers of 10 millimeter foam to create the base. Being foam, the sword is gonna need something to help support it. To do this, I took a sharp craft knife and carved a groove into the middle of the sword. I then glued a wooden dowel into this groove. With the dowel in place, I glued my two halves together. With more 10 millimeter foam, I added some raised details to the hand guard. At this point, it was time to make my sword look a little more real by beveling the edges. To achieve this, I marked where I wanted the taper to start and then I took it outside to my Dremel. As you can see, this is a very messy process, so make sure you always wear the proper safety equipment. A respirator and eye protection is necessary. After sanding, I took the sword back inside and I added a PVC pipe for the handle.
After a very much needed shower, I set my props aside and began casting some gems. Both the sword and the shield have gem embellishments on them. I started by molding the shape I wanted, and then I cast everything in a quick curing resin. I needed one large gem for the shield and two smaller round gems for the sword. The resin I used cures within 30 minutes, so once they were done, I popped them out of their molds and I began to back them with a shiny vinyl. This is purely just to add some extra shine to the finished gems. I added the two round gems to my sword as well as some foam dowel detailing. To create the sword's pommel, I chose to use Instamorph. Instamorph is a thermal plastic that you can either heat in hot water or with a heat gun. When it is warm, it is very moldable and pliable, but once it's cooled, it's nice and sturdy. With the pommel in place, I added a few more foam dowels for detailing and the sword was all finished. I also added the larger gem to my shield, and with that, all of my props were ready to be primed and painted. To the sword specifically, I chose to hit it with a couple of coats of both Rapid Fill and Fine Finish, purely just to help with the sanded edges so they didn't look rough. Then I hit all of the foam pieces with a few coats of Hex Flex. It's important to prime your foam so that you both save on paint as well as create a nicer finish. All of my pieces got appropriate colors of base paint before I went at everything with acrylics. For the arm guards, I started with a dark brown. Then I added a lighter brown to a few areas. When all of that had dried, I went over everything with a black wash, making sure to wipe off the excess. For the sword, I hit the blade with some silver spray paint and then the handle received some black paint in preparation for gold rub and buff. It was at this point that I began debating if the silver looked right and I quickly decided that no, it, it didn't. I began with a coat of black acrylic, both to give everything a good base and to give the paint something to stick to. I then mixed up a bluish toned silver as a new base color for the blade. To add some more definition to the sword, I took a nice gunmetal colored paint and gently darkened the center. To finish off the new paint job, I took some white paint and a thin brush and added a few highlights here and there. The last thing needed to finish my sword was a leather wrap around the handle, and with that the sword was completed. The shield proved very hard to film due to its sheer size alone, but to start the painting process, I hit the edges with some silver spray paint. I then went to the center and covered it in red and blue. I then weathered everything with a black wash to bring out the details and make it look a little more battle-worn. The very last thing my shield needed was some straps so I could carry it. I achieved this with some 5mm foam straps glued to the back, and the shield was all done. Now on to the sewing. For this project, because it did have a short turnaround time, I chose to use a pattern that I have used a lot simply because I know how it goes together and it's very easy for me to work with. I chose a nice green linen as well as a satin and a little bit of green silk to create my tunic. Sewing can sometimes be a bit repetitive to watch, so just enjoy this nice little montage.
After many, many hours hunched over my sewing machine, this is the end product. I also had a long flowing skirt that went underneath the tunic. With all of the sewing done, the cosplay was complete. All that was left to do was to put on my makeup and head out for some photos. This has been an absolutely wonderful experience and I'm so happy that I got to build this cosplay for Tunic. If you'd like to check out the game, I have it linked below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more tutorials in the future. As always, have a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching.